Hello, this is Bridget Rao with Divine Essentials. All right, guys, I have um, these cards here that the other day I started to read on Instagram, but the thing was not working correctly, just like everything else that I try to do all the time lately. I literally had to redo my entire phone back to factory settings because it was like, no, nope, no, 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 nope. You can't use any of the basic functions of this phone. Then all these other things are going on and all this other stuff happening like electronically. I also have had some weird things happening where um, I'm not exactly sure how it all like comes together, but my investigative mind has brought things into place that I'm like putting these things into a puzzle. I don't want to tell everybody about it because I am on to somebody and once I figure it out, I'm going to get them. But in the meantime, I don't want them to know what I know, so I'm not going to tell you, but I will soon. So, um, we have Palladian lineup happening right now. We just had the 11-11 portal happen. We had the eclipse happen. We had the freaking full moon happen. And this happened and that happened and all this shit happening all the fucking time. It's a non-stop. This is the time of year that it's always kind of like, whoa. Anyways, because the veil gets thin at Samhain or Halloween. And that's like, hello, I'm going to unleash the crazy shit into your world. And then... From there, it's just like bzz, 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 bzz. lots of stuff continuing to happen. Um, I also feel like over the years, I've um, I've become more sensitive, or I've done more to enhance the abilities that I have. So it's like every year just seems more intense. It's like oh no, it's just you are becoming more sensitive to the intensity. Um, and I brought this guy out. Or I brought him up. This is uh, this is if you if you um, listen to the podcast, I talked about Hatman recently, and this is like my best representation of the Hatman. Okay, if you've ever heard of Hatman, he is a worldwide phenomena, and it happens with sleep paralysis. Okay, happened to me twice. The first night that like I was sleeping at my ex's parents' house in the room like there was a room that they had upstairs and he came and I couldn't move at all at all but I literally I remember like I called my it was like 2 a.m. and I ran outside after you know I was released from my can't move but I know you're there and I can't like see you but I can see you because you're a fucking shadow man and it's creepy as hell then there's the old hag she sits on your chest and uh, makes it hard to breathe. I feel like she gets the guys or something. I don't know. If you look it up on YouTube, it's literally something all across the world. I had never heard about it. Never saw nothing about it. Never knew it was an actual thing. I just remember calling my mom afterwards, like, crying because I was so scared. And I was explaining him to her because, like, this is, like, my best way of explaining him. I was like, it looks like the the, the thing with the hat because he has a hat on. So you see, like, the brim of his hat. But he's dark. He Like, you don't see him. Like, he's not, like, you know, in color. He's a shadow man. Okay? So, um, what happens is they show up. You can't move a fucking muscle, but you know they're there. You're awake. And, and it's actually a very, very close step to, like, when people do astral projection. whole concept of this is, like, when you want to astral project, you actually want to kind of have that, that thing going on where you are basically unable to move your physical body, but you are aware of everything around you and your surroundings. Because when that happens, you can leave your physical body and, like, you know, travel through the astral realms. But when he's there, that's not what's going on. When he comes in, he's just, like, scary as hell. You cannot move. You cannot say anything. You cannot, like, ah. You're, like, freaking out inside of your brain. But you don't, nothing ever. You, ah. And then finally, like, some, it's, I don't even know why or how. It's like everybody has their, like, release moment um, at different points within it. But usually you'll have a moment where you release. And then you're like, oh, my God. And it's traumatizing. I had it happen that night. We had trundle beds, and then the next time, like, like when I went back in after talking to my mom, I was like, I got onto the bed with the guy that I was living with, and I was like, move over, and he's like, what are you doing? It's like a little twin-sized bed, and I'm all scared in the middle of the night like a little kid, 
he was like whatever and I laid down next to him like nuzzled up against him with like my face against him and my back against like you know the outside <laughs> the creepy land and I heard him again and I froze again I fucking froze again but this time I heard the door open to the room that we were in TV was on it wasn't like loud but like you know when the TV lights are on a flashing that was happening but you can see that he went across the TV because it, it, like you just you know like if you're in a room it, it doesn't matter if your eyes are closed or whatever you'll see that like the shift in the in the lights okay that happened um and and then from that moment on after I broke out of the second time I didn't sleep until I got the basement set up for us and I just cleaned scrubbed and like you know moved and organized like these people's entire basement because I was like fuck you man um and then the first night that we were down there I had cleansed energetically physically all those things he came down but he didn't come into the room he just came down he stood at the bottom of the steps but he couldn't enter our space and then I I this is like the only time that I think I've ever made that man do anything I demanded a door I was like we need a door no we're gonna have a door no fucking curtain shit we're getting a door and I wouldn't stop until we got the door and he he knew like I was freaking out so um this is what he looks like you know but this is like the mild not a scary version of him if you look it up I ended up finding out like a month later, to, like months later, I had my la- uh, computer down there with me at this time, you know, we're all set up living in there. And one day, um, Art Bell came on with his Coast to Coast AM show on YouTube, and they were like, hat man, blah, 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 blah. and I looked over it in the screen, like, you know, the picture, I was like, oh my god, that's him. And then he talked about the old hag within that, so that's how I learned about her. Um, but there's people across the globe, literally, in all of the places, in all, all the lands, have seen this dude and her and have that same thing where they freeze, they can't move, um, but then they break out of it and it's, it's just like creepy, scary, ah! so yeah, have fun sleeping tonight guys, um, but yeah, that's what he looks like, and I already did read some of these the other day on my Instagram, um, I did the, uh, I don't even know, because, like, I've had, they got, like, a little messed up, but I know, I know, I I love watching you sleep, you're so peaceful, um, there's a fucking hat man hanging out, I love watching you sleep, you're so peaceful, um, I literally can't tell you, so these ones had come through, I remember that, I remember, what else, um, I don't know, I feel like things moved a lot. I, I know I've read a couple of them. Uh, all right, well, sometimes I just don't know what I really want. I think I did talk about, yeah, I did talk about this one too. So basically within that, it was like, you know, tapping into this person's energy. You know, this person may find you to be very peaceful. They may find you to be beautiful. They want to tell you more about how they feel about you. They like you. They care about you. Um, they even say, I crave you so much. I have so much resentment. This was another one that was there. And what I was picking up within that is, like, sometimes when a person hurts you, they resent you not because of, like, what you did, but because of what they did and what you remind them of when they see you or they connect with you. So it's like, if I hurt you, and I know that I hurt you, and I broke your heart, or I did this, or I did that, or, like, I acted stupid, or I made a fool of myself, like, whatever it is, whenever we do something and we aren't proud of it or we feel like ashamed of it or we feel embarrassed by it or whatever the thing is that's not like oh amazing whatever it's associated with could sometimes become like a burden to us because it's like oh my god like every time I look at you I'm resenting you because you reminded me of when I did something bad that makes me feel stupid or silly or you know like a fool or like I messed it up or I shouldn't have done that regret and pain and you know, just those things. So I don't think it's necessarily that like they resent you just because of any like bad, horrible thing could be in some cases, maybe you've done stuff to them, but they still crave you. So I feel like it's like, you're beautiful, peaceful. They want to open up and talk to you. I feel like for some of you, they want to say, I'm sorry, or they want to like explain themselves, whatever it is that they did or didn't do. Um, but they have a hard time because it's like, they, they, I really feel like they're overwhelmed by the feeling that they have 
within themselves or towards themselves that maybe comes about through the resentment of you like and again it's a weird vibration that I'm picking up there it's not even necessarily like that I like your traditional way of thinking like I resent you I don't like you it's it's just like I resent what I did to you so every time I look at you I'm resenting you through me or me through you you know that mirrored thing and when I don't know what I want or what I don't know what I really want basically there's a lot of people out there who do this with everything they're like it doesn't matter whether it's like dinner or their freaking you know type of um like thing that they're gonna get for the crystal or the type of thing that they're gonna wear for that day like which one should I wear should I wear this one or should I do that one should I do this or should I do that should I get that color or this color people sometimes don't know what they want and they take forever to decide um, and then when they do decide a lot of times they will feel like oh no maybe I made the wrong decision or why did I do that or maybe they do realize after the fact they made a wrong decision or they, they just don't really know or whatever or again if there's already been weirdness between you in the past where it's like they wanted to open up to tell you things that they couldn't they may have chosen to like separate themselves from you rather than to like keep reminding themselves of like all their awkward time that they have um vested within to you you know it's like they may just have chosen to just like back up because it's overwhelming it's a lot of energy a lot of people don't know how to cope they don't know how to communicate clearly this is like i just don't know how to speak i don't know how to choose i don't know what i want but you're beautiful and I crave you and you know I want to speak to you I just don't know how yet so I don't think it's anything that you've done wrong or that this person just doesn't like you or anything like that I just think there's probably difficulties and um you know like I, I know how sometimes if we go through like a toxic relationship when we come out of a toxic relationship or we've been through them in the past it doesn't even matter because like I've been out of I've been out of a toxic relationship for like fucking six years now. Oh my god, how has it been that long? Can't believe, yeah, because he was in, he went he got um, locked up for six years, and he is out. So um, six years I've been uh, free of that, <laughs> but it's like went by so quick. Okay, but if you come out of that that first year, that second year, that third year, you are you don't even know who you are. Because when you're in a toxic relationship with somebody that's really not good to you, you know, and I'm seeing this, we both have toxic energetic cords, energy to clear. Um, you don't even know how to like be an individual on your own without that toxic individual around you. Um, because like when you're in one of those situations or you've grown up in a situation where maybe somebody in your parenting was maybe not the healthiest or maybe they had some some types of behaviors that were just not not the best right it sets you up in your life to always be like available for whatever that person's got going on like are they in a good mood or are they a bad mood uh what do they want right now how can i like be 10 steps ahead to elim eliminate or alleviate or avoid any bullshit today because you don't want to go through it you don't want to hear it you don't want to you know press the buttons and and get the evil side you know it's like you just want to stay over on the easy like do 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 so you kind of become like a um a doormat or you become somebody that doesn't even you know have a voice anymore you don't have an opinion anymore you don't know what you like because you weren't allowed to like it you don't know who you are because you weren't allowed to be who you are you don't know what you are doing or where you are going or where you would even like to go for that matter because you've been told how and where and when by somebody or others for so long that it, it takes a little while for you to like get yourself back together into a place of like, hey, well, wow, like I do have um, an opinion and it's safe for me to voice it and I do have boundaries and I can enforce them and I do have self-respect and self-love and self-value and I can grow and I can overcome this but you know they, they say like they recommend like if you've been in something like that to like at least take a year to yourself to just like you know get better because that shit messes you up within your mind it makes you feel inadequate and it makes you feel not good and a lot of times when we go through those things our attachment styles become aligned in a way that we actually feel more comfortable 
connecting with those types of people. So if we don't take any time to heal or learn or grow or evolve or establish some of that stuff that we didn't put out in the beginning of others, you know, or as a result of wherever we've been, you're just going to go into another one like that or another one that's not going to be like, yoo-hoo, this is a wicked healthy situation. Or even if it is, say it is something that's going to be good to you, love you, isn't going to cheat on you, lie to you, manipulate you, breadcrumb you, love bomb you, um, you know, do all the weird shit that they do to you, like lie to you and then make you feel like you must be nuts and that, that, that they must be somehow telling the truth even though you have proof, you know, uh, they make you question your reality. And when you go through that long enough and all of those things, even if a healthy, normal person presents in your life, you may still suffer or struggle with simple things like, I have this resentment. I crave you so much, but I have all this resentment. It has nothing to do with me resenting you. It's resentment from over here where I was all these times, you know, from all the pain and all the stuff that I've been going through in my own life prior to you. But then this, I don't know what I really want. It's like, like you could have a healthy, normal like person there willing to be there with you who actually asks you what you want you don't know how to know what you want because you've never been given that opportunity up until then. So, you know, it, 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 it would require, it would require a healthy person or a patient person or understanding person or somebody that's been through it to be able to like understand and not, and not get, um, you know, offensive or defensive or feel like you're being attacked because of, what that person's doing and a lot of people unfortunately take everything personally it's like whatever you do for some reason i'm gonna you know wrap that all up within me and and you know just point that finger right here and say he must be doing that because i'm this or he must have done that because of that but but he must be this he must be that and we never stop to realize like everybody who's doing things is doing things because of what they've been through or where they've come from so if they're doing not great things, or they're doing things you don't understand, or they're doing things that are hard to, um, you know, figure out, it's probably because they're having a hard time within themselves or from where they've come from. So, you know, try to be patient. Also, be, be responsible for yourself and understanding that if you've been through those things, you might need to be aware of all of that and, and communicate, which... It's like, I want to tell you, but I'm, I've, I've tried. I literally can't tell you. And this is, an, again, another one of those things that generates out of toxicity of relationships and partnerships or family dynamics that didn't create a safe space for you to fucking express all that you had inside of you. So if you have never done that, it wasn't safe for you to do it. And every time you've ever done it in the past, it either led to a big fight or a falling out or people making you feel worse than you did before. Or you made to feel stupid or inferior or whatever. It's going to be hard to do that. So, again, for many of you, you may both have this or you may have this with each other on some degree. And my thing is, like, you can have a twin flame with karma they come you know hand in hand if you were in another lifetime together there's going to be karma if you've had children before karma if you have a long history with somebody karma it's just how it is it does karma doesn't necessarily mean that like evil bad toxic never going to be okay twin flame for like there's a fine line for me it's like okay you'd be like an abusive toxic narcissistic never going anywhere this thing that you might as well just run the hell away from type of connection or divine connection is the one where you evolve the one where you grow the one that inspires you to make a difference within all of this if you can look at yourself and say that you've genuinely improved then that may be a divine connection now that doesn't necessarily mean that every single one that has improved does have that but that's one of those those marker points of like Hey, they're improving, I'm improving. We've we've made progress over the time. We're not descending. We're not devolving here. Like they've making, you know, leaps and bounds in regards to like their evolution within their consciousness or their emotions and how they show up and how they treat me and how I do, you know, this thing with them. Um, you know, and again, it, it's gonna be different for everybody. You're gonna be the one that comes up with that understanding inside of yourself. And you just have to be honest with yourself, like don't waste your fucking time like if you don't feel like there's um a healthy dynamic between you and another person 
and it's not improving and like you have not seen that person that you are connected to improve over over you know months years then it's probably not going to and you probably need to let that go completely and just once you do release that you'll probably be catalysted towards a true divine connection if it is somebody that is divine and there is just this stuff to work on to clear up to heal it may not happen very quickly you know it could and, and i think everybody gets all like too consumed within that and that actually keeps them from getting to where they want to get because they're all focused on the outside of themselves like wanting that other person they're codependent they're becoming like yeah i need it i need it i need it and what that does is cause the other person who's your magnetic thing to be like repulsed by you and to run away from you because they don't it, it's just the wrong dynamic feminine is receptive she's the negative the masculine is positive and he is the charge and you need to let him charge into the negative you know like give that positive and negative let him come to you let him make that energy move towards you and to feel safe and secure within it don't be like ah! <laughs> like grip onto him so he can't move because that's going to make him run away um so it's a balancing act and it's also a healing journey there's going to be a lot of levels to it releasing the attachment to outcome releasing the attachment to needing it to be something divine and like immediate is the best thing that i can give you for advice is like you know I, I the thing i've been dealing with has been going on since i was 14 it's been over 20 fucking years okay so it's not always a quick little boop i see girls are like it's been three months <laughs> i'm like yeah yeah okay i could do that with my freaking like eyes closed man what are you talking about um, but you know, it, it's not a rush. And, and again, it's a healing process. So you would need to take time to heal if you've been through a lot. And I know a lot of the star seeds, a lot of the people out there who resonate as a divine feminine or as somebody who's a healer, an empath, sensitive, that doesn't just come about usually. It's not like you were just a chosen, like, I, and I don't like this whole chosen one thing. I feel like it's, that's fucking ego. I'm a chosen one. It's like, oh my God. Um, maybe you are a chosen one, but like, don't go around saying that because it doesn't, it doesn't flatter you. It doesn't, it sounds really messed up. Um, it's, I don't know, maybe it's my own personal thing, but I just don't, I don't, I get what they're saying with it. It just comes off as like very egotistical and, and it's very shallow and it's not, it's not divine. It's not what a divine person would do. Um, when you go out into the world and you look for like a holy man or a holy woman or somebody who's of the divine light, think of Jesus, okay? He wasn't why I'm the chosen one. I'm the, the, the. He was just freaking, he was a carpenter man, he just playing it cool. He did his tricks and everybody freaked out, but he didn't like ride that energy. I'm a chosen one, you know? So try to keep it cool with that because that that is a thing in itself where I feel like that's where we get these people coming in here that are not chosen ones that are not empaths that are not sensitive that are not on a divine path who want to be because they think it's freaking oh it's so nice and amazing i want a twin flame because it's the best thing ever if you don't have a twin flame do not ask for one it is not the best thing ever it is difficult it is painful it is excruciating at times it is the, one of the most difficult things that i think i've ever dealt with in my life and i've dealt with a lot of weird shit and painful stuff but it's like to love somebody unconditionally that you cannot give that love to that like runs away from it is very difficult to deal with to be confused all the time as to what the hell they want or why are they like why are they doing this like why are they coming back why are they leaving are they going to stay are they going to go but why did they choose them what what's wrong with me like it brings up all your insecurities it brings up every little thing inside of you your shadow self you go into deep dark depressions to the dark night of the soul there's times you think you're going to freaking die at points people have like twin flame sickness i believe in that because i literally had a day last year where i found like a post it was like listing off like what the things were for it and i was like holy shit is that what is that what this is like and it was like every single thing i had experienced like weird shit that like you wouldn't expect to be listed in this list of stuff as to like you know you might experience this and that but but did the boop a doop a doop just a tons of it and i was like holy shit that's it i'm dying because of him like but but realizing that it's it's 
it's an energetic thing. It's an energetic sickness. It's an energetic balance. It's an energetic union. And it's not, it's not something that people are like, oh, it's so amazing and I just really want that type of love. You can have hot sex, chemistry, passion, desire, and fun, and romance, and like f- find somebody, get together with them, tra la 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 get married and have babies and do all your fucking shit that you want to do. I think most of us would like to just have an easy, simple da-da-da-da with our lives. But that's not what a twin flame does. Twin flame comes in and shakes up everything. It shakes up your mind. It shakes up your body. It shakes up your energy. It shakes up your 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 entire like dynamic on this planet and, and in the world. And there's a thing that you cannot deny about it. You can't stay away from each other if it's truly a thing. But then there will be times that you have to stay away. And there's the running and chasing that like over time will shift. And sometimes you might find yourself not wanting to go near them when they want to come towards you. And it's like this crazy thing. But those who do not have one or have not found theirs, I do not recommend seeking it out because it's not the thing that people make it out to be some lovely dovey, like the best romance ever. You know, um, it, it is very, very much love within it and very romantic at times. But the majority of the time has been very painful, lonely, difficult, depressing. Um, And it pushes you to become better. It pushes you to heal. It's literally the whole fucking process is healing, overcoming. What is my beliefs that are holding me back? What is my, you know, um, energy doing at this time? Where am I blocking myself? Where am I self-sabotaging? Where am I, you know, not establishing boundaries with this person? Where am I allowing things that I would never allow with other people, but I'm allowing it with this one because I've put them on that freaking pedestal. So it's like a whole series of things that people go through. There's toxic things that we need to eliminate. So we go to the highest vibration and frequency that we can be within and to anchor that here. And some some twins are not even going to be physically together in this life. They just are both here anchoring the energy that's needed because they have that energy that's needed. They are from the stars or from somewhere else. They have the higher vibrational energy. Star seeds are basically like little antennas all over the planet. So you see like, like, boop, okay, this is one of us, and there's another one of us, and we're just going to like spread them all out all over the place. Um, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whether you're a star seed or twin flame or whatever, you're receiving energies and you're receiving frequencies and you're like a radio station. And when you wake up, you like amplify. It's like you went from 3G to 5G. Okay, boom, you're reaching wider waves and wider spaces and you are seeing more and you are hearing more and you are knowing more and you are doing more and in evolving more and you will continue to do that and you'll continue to expand, you'll continue to grow. And it, it is a divine thing. It's very much necessary and needed for many people um, on the planet as a collective too. So as one of us wakes up and we spread that energy and that frequency and we raise it up and then the next one does and they do the same and they raise it up and then they boop, 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 boop. It's like a domino effect. Eventually more, 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 more will awaken. When I woke up in 2011, I thought that I was going to be the only one like me that I would ever know. I never thought I would meet a person in the physical world that was like, you know, knowing what a star seed even was. I never thought that I would have like an opportunity to like speak and become friends with and close with the people who I was listening to on YouTube you know it, it was like it was a very it was a very weird time for me and it, it was just like wow this is gonna be weird <laughs> like I remember trying to tell my sister I'm like Chrissy bah, 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 bah. and she's like yeah okay bye like, she didn't even hear what I was saying she's gone I'm like okay yep I'm alone so um from then to now has been insane insane amounts of people waking up crystals everywhere people chakras energy frequency it's just like mainstream out there now it has its positives and negatives because sometimes people use that um in a negative way there's a hawk out there um you know like they just want to just want to monetize it or they're you know taking advantage of people um see the hawk He's all about having a higher perspective, seeing from the new heights that we are awakening to. Um, 
and they come and they help us to realize that like things are going to be changing things are going to be shifting and as we rise up to that higher level and we can look down from that higher perspective we can see all of the things you know so it's like maybe a few years ago if i pulled these cards i wouldn't see them the same way i see them now i wouldn't see the energy of the messages um so much as i do at this time okay it, it's like that but with everything okay and uh it, it's again like you know if you see you see sometimes people see an animal that's eating another animal and they interfere with that because they want to save it oh my god but what about the animal that was trying to eat that animal he needs to eat man it's a circle of life and everything's interconnected and we are all part of that Ouroboros, which is like constantly recreating itself and constantly expanding. We have that infinite thing going on, you know, the infinity symbol, um, the serpent intertwined, we get the Kundalini things happening, awakening within people. And that's another thing with your twin flame that a lot of people experience um, is the Kundalini awakening. And when that happens, that's like literally an, a very intense thing. Sometimes people try to invoke it or have it happen just randomly while they're like meditating or doing yoga, or whatever. Um, it literally can make you go insane, you know, like, like people like get locked up because of it. You know, they, they just, it's too much. The energy is like, ah! um, like overwhelming for some people because they may not have been ready for that frequency at that time, or they may not have, um, you know, prepared themselves, or they could be impure with their intention of why they want it. Maybe they just want it so they can, like, be the sex god. Um, or they may not be, you know, putting the right things into their bodies, and their frequencies and energies will, won't match, and that will make them volatile for that energy, which will just cause, like, a short circuit. So if you're an antenna, and you're anchoring energies from above, but then you turn that one on inside of you, which basically your kundalini is at the root, the base of your spine, okay? It's like, it turns on, and then it, it circles up every one of the seven chakras, like it coils around them going up and then it comes back down and coils the opposite way like a figure eight around all of them but that's an energy flow that's always moving and it's usually triggered through you know having you know connection there through your sexual energy center with your divine people um and when that happens that amplifies things much more and that enhances things much more you might see more feel more know more uh, that chemistry that you've experienced before may intensify even more so you may feel the pull of that person um, in ways that you may have before but it may just be like more uh, present or they may become more aware of it they may wake up as a result of the fact that you know that has triggered within you um, because like I the person that I've connected to they're now awake okay if, like six years ago <laughs> they would have been like the least likely person on my list of like who I thought was gonna wake up next okay I didn't I never expected it I never even really thought about it I was never like oh this is a requirement for you it was just a, one of those things that was like okay I guess this really is really what this is because like like they're, they're just like go by the textbook of what a twin flame is supposed to do and happen and play out between you like when you look it up and you look into all the shit about it it's like oh yeah so that's exactly oh yeah okay uh-huh yeah and oh and now you're awake too okay so you're just going right along with these things so you know it, it, that i find that that happens as like same thing with my star seeds right we've lived lives in the stars for the first year, I would not accept that I was a star seed. I kept getting the synchronicity. I kept getting the signs. The deeper I looked into the star seed synchronicities and like my own natal chart and my numerology and all of the things that are out there to connect all of that stuff, the deeper I looked, the harder I tried to like, you know, just disprove it, the more evidence would come in to be like, no, this is actually what this is. And that's like kind of what happens too. It's like every time I try to say, you know, he's not my twin flame. He's just an asshole. Like he, whenever that comes about, they're like, oh yeah, okay, pfft, here's some shit. And they like, they, they just trigger a whole bunch of like an avalanche of more synchronicity and confirmations and undeniable things that you cannot turn away. Um, like today, okay, another example of this. We are in the Pleiadian lineup right now. It happens in May and November every year. 
the 15th to the 20th. This was one of those signifying moments for me when I, when I finally decided, okay, I guess this is me. Like after a year of it, my mother said, Bridget, she was due on the 17th, born on the 18th, a minute away from the 19th. She always said that, okay? Website had this information, lavendar, starseedhotline.net. She talks about the Pleiadian lineup and how everywhere she went for the longest time, it was like 25, 26, 27 degrees, ba 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 ba, of the Taurus or the um, Scorpio, and boop 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 boop. And every person she asked, everywhere she went, she would ask like a, an entire restaurant full of people, and everybody who gave their birthday would have those three degree markings. They were born in the lineup, they had the Pleiadian markings. Um, and then she'd do it on a plane. She, and everywhere for the longest time, it kept happening, kept happening, until she went to Egypt, went into the Great Pyramid, did some activations and stuff within, like, the sarcophagus, and um, did all this crazy stuff during the energy of a lineup. Uh, things happened. They had a walk-in soul come in during those transmissions. So basically, a walk-in soul is, you're here, living your life, right? Now say you're anchoring your energy and you're doing your shit and you're on your mission, your purpose, and your stuff. Because star seeds are a little bit different. We're not just like your average everyday Joe Schmo living out here. Like we literally come in with a purpose and a mission and a thing that we are supposed to be doing. And if you fall too far away from doing it, they will interfere. And sometimes they just do this anyways because it's an experiment. They literally say, play a lineup, experiment time. This is when they do their weird special projects. And I'm like, yeah, of course, I'm a fucking special weird project. But the guy that was in the sarcophagus stopped breathing. He was like dead, okay? Dead. They were like, oh my God, oh my God. Crystals and shit all over him and they're freaking out. And then <gasps> he comes back. But he was a walk-in soul now. He was a totally different guy. He had been flirting with one of the girls that was there, like as part of this like, you know, group of people who went to do this. Um, he had like stuff at home, like a job and kids and all these things. He, he came out of the sarcophagus. He acted like he didn't even know who the girl was that he had been previously flirting with, you know, went home, changed his job, changed his life, never, never looked back and, and went on to do the mission that he was meant to do. So sometimes that will be contracted on an I am presence level. Your I am presence who is up there in the ethers will know ahead of time, like, all right, it's coming up on uh, November, you know, 15th, ba 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 ba. Uh, you're coming out of there and I'm going in. And also there's soul fragments. So like when the shamans do shamanic work, we do soul retrieval, um, we do, you know, things like that. Basically, illness or imbalance or like not being okay comes from soul loss. So it's like, I had a traumatic moment. Somebody, you know, hurt me or something bad happened. They say that a fragment of your soul is left in that moment. So that could be in past lives, and that could be here, and that could be all over the place, wherever it's transpired. So the shaman travels through the different worlds, the upper world, the lower world, the middle world, whatever world needs to go to, to navigate and retrieve that part of your soul to bring it back to you so that you can get yourself all put back together again. So what I feel is that, yeah, sometimes people will have the walk-in soul come in to take over to like redirect everything it's like okay whole new you and other times i think they basically are bringing in like a fragment of the soul and i feel like in some ways it's kind of what happened to me in 2011 because i don't feel like like i remember the life that i had over my life you know like i remember it i can see it like i know who i was but i don't feel like completely the same as i was um and, and I had like a buzz go through my head that day that basically I feel woke me up. And all of the synchronicities and all the confirmations and all the things that have just found their way to me without me seeking it out kind of confirms it. But last night I was on uh, Facebook and I saw this thing. It was like a guy, he was, he was showing like a UFO, like a short little video. Um, in, in the comments, there was people who were like, oh yeah, ba ba, that like they've they've made it like known now, uh, like the government admits to it, and he's like, go look it up, and then he posted a screenshot, and the thing that he posted was f like the, the articles on Google had been published May 18th and May 17th of 2022, and I was like, oh my god, like it's just that further little boop for me because my birthday is May 18th. My mother has always mentioned it my whole life. That was like one of the final marking moments for me to be like, okay, I, I can't really deny this anymore. Um, 
and it just it was one of the final like boops and then lately I've been seeing all the stuff out here and having all the synchronicities connected to that so when I see other people with their little you know UFO stuff and I hear the shit from you know I get comments from people and I'm like, it's, 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 it's no real thing it's crazy but there's dismissers there's people who cannot see it they will not fathom it they will never be able to allow or comprehend that there's more to um, the existence that we have than what meets the eye so they you know come in with that shit and when when that happens it like takes me down you know it my vibration starts to like drop because i get like frustrated i get what the fuck is the point of me being here like why am i even doing this like like i can't even fucking like like i got them in my back yeah they're in my fucking hand dude what is wrong with you like and i start to get frustrated and then they'll come and they'll show me something like that where they even throw the birthday in there as like the extra like confirmation um, to help me to know that I'm not crazy, because sometimes you do feel like you're crazy, like, am I just lost, am I just nuts, like, am I, you know, do I need to just go, like, go get locked up and not do this anymore, like, maybe there is a problem with me, but then when you see, oh, yeah, like, the, you know, the dudes up in, um, Washington, D.C., uh, basically admitting that there's all this stuff, and they have all the proof to show you, um, I don't know if it will work, does this, uh, where the hell is it? Where's my other phone? Oh, I have too many phones. Um, I got this phone, this phone, and the phone I'm recording with. But I was going to just show you real quick. I posted it today because it was there. Come on. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, come on. I know I did it here too on Instagram. What the hell? Why isn't it not working? This is, see, this is what's been happening to me all week with everything I try to do. I want to scream. I'm like, why doesn't anything work? So, um, here, this, this phone is working. Um, these are the things that just make me smile now. Pleiadian lineup happens May and November, and we are in one right now. The height of them, the 17th, 18th, and 19th. My birthday is May 18th. My weekend happened 11, 11, 11, just in time for the 11, 15, 11, which was my ex's birthday who passed over. And now I was looking at the comments on a short video, and someone was saying, hey, they already admit Google, Google it. And, um, he left that screenshot in the comments with May 18th, 2022, and the 17th on the posted dates. So this is one of the times that I can convey my synchronicity to you and some of you will get it. And it um, it doesn't stop for me, but most of which is aligned to things I don't want to even try to explain to others. Um, and then this is the thing from Google, the Pentagon UFO hunt. Uh, Pentagon admits to 400 UFO sightings in 11 encounters. Um, See, May 17th, May 17th, May 18th. And this one was purple because I think I guess this is the one that he clicked on before. Because uh, this is his screenshot that I, that I you know, saved um, from that comment section. And then officials from the Pentagon committed to understanding UF origins. It came 11 months after a government report documented more than 140 cases of of unidentified aerial phenomena or UAPs that the US military pilots bah, 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 bah. so they are starting to you know put this out there I remember back in 2011 guys like gotta be mindful here. that's 11 fucking years ago I've been doing this for um, they were always say like oh yeah there's going to be we're gonna tell you they're gonna talk to you there's going and it, it, the same shit has been said for a fucking decade. It's like, oh my god. Like, like we're going to show up in the sky. And there's going to be, like, you know, your government's going to tell you. And there's going to be this and there's going to be that. And they, you know, the same things have been repeated for so long that after a while, you stop, you know, trusting or even giving any, like, belief to it. You're like, yeah, I don't know, man. I've been waiting a fucking long time for this 5G land to pop up. But I do... I have been getting back to that place now where I'm like, I can actually feel the shift now. I can actually see the shift now, and, and it's not as far-fetched. Um, 
as it once may have been within the midst of that. Like, you know, five years in, you're like, okay, I'm kind of sick of waiting, guys. And, you know, you just kind of like, I think you gravitate away and back towards and away from where you need to be. Just like within these connections, they come and they go and you gravitate back and forth until you get to the place where you need to be. So at some point, there will be the union. At some point, there will be the disclosure. At some point, they will be out there for all of us to see. At some point, that shift will happen where we split. And when that happens, the people who don't do the work, the people who don't believe, the people who are like, f- fucking shut off, they will not turn on. You could kick them, and they just, they're stuck in that fucking mode. You can't upgrade their browser. They're done. Those people will stay in the third dimensional version of existence and the reality that they're, you know, condensed and conditioned to be within and exist within and that they're good with. And the others who have been doing the work and awakening and trying and ascending and believing and opening and connecting will get over there with that divine energy of the sun. Yes, energy, power, climax, fulfilled, pride, radiance, success, vigor, divine masculine daytime. So... Just trust and know and keep doing the work to raise your vibration. Love, romance, joy, affection, fulfillment, kindness, and forgiveness. And if you have somebody that has hurt you, okay, if they, you know, things have been bad at different points, like holding on to resentment or holding on to pain and anger and frustration and all those, I know it's hard. I know it sucks. I've cried my eyes out at times. Um, There was times that it was like, I felt, I felt like I was literally like stabbed in my chest but holding on to that or or keeping that within and not releasing it will basically be like okay i'm gonna stay here in the third dimension and um i'm not gonna ascend i'm not gonna come with you guys like i'm just gonna be over here being mad and sad and depressed and miserable in my in my duality existence of okay so it it takes it just takes True love, I think, and that's and that's a test too. Like, if you're somebody out there and you're like, "Am I is this a twin flame or is this a karmic lesson or ba ba ba?" One of the easiest ways to know is like, if you can't forgive them for things, or if you can't like um, want them to be happy more than like your desire for them to be with you, then that's probably not like a real situation. And and again, it may change. I feel like. You need to heal in order for you to be able to release the ego that creates a lot of that, like, you know, they're mine, jealousy, meh, blah, 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 blah. But at at the base of things, if you truly love somebody unconditionally, they're your your other half, or they're you, essentially, right? They're like the mirror to you, or the other side of you, um, well... Like, you should want them to be happy regardless if that means, like, they don't want to be near you right now or um, regardless of how long they're gone for when they come back. And, you know, and and also you will feel that that existence between the two of you regardless if you communicate or not. Like, there there was, like, 10-year spans of time that I didn't see this person, talk to this person, have them around at all. But I would, like, feel them. There would be times that, like, because we live near each other, like, so there would be times that I'd go down into the Plymouth waterfront area and they would be down there driving in their car and I'd be driving in my car and I would feel them before, like, seeing them. And I would know, and this is way back before my awakening and shit, so it was really weird, but I would always, I was like, had like a fucking radar. I would know. (laughs) I would know. And there they would be. They would go by me. I wouldn't see each other, talk, talk to each other. They probably didn't even know I was existing in that moment. But I had like a beep, beep, beep. But those types of things will be there. That energy will be felt among you. You will have a deeper connection on a level that's like not so much about what you want or you need or what fills you up. When you truly love somebody or you truly care about somebody or you have a divine thing with them, you don't, you will, you will sacrifice your own stuff so that they can be getting what they want or doing what they want, even if it hurts. Um, Okay, and then this was here when I, so swan, soulmate, twin flame, the one, a pair of things, blooming love, faith, a deep soul connection. It's like, you will just know, even if they don't know, you will know, you will feel it. And they may not know until, you know, ever, or they may not know because they haven't woke up yet. But 
Oh, they may know, and it may freak them out because it's a lot. It's a lot to take on. It's not like a little tiny nothing. Um, and the hierophant is that persevering. It's that stable, committed, like like hierophant energy is. Hey, we're gonna get married. He's a high priest. High priestess and high priest. It's like the I am presence of the emperor and the empress. These are the divine essences. This is like divine masculine and feminine in union is that high priest and, and higher font energy, okay? So this is where they're headed to, you know? Um, and there is a possessiveness within it, There's, but there's also like a practical, strong, dependable, prosperous energy within this. And developing over time, having a legacy, the good stuff, the finesse, the ripening, you get have that aging well as you go forward. And look at that, the moon and the shen, the divine feminine, the divine masculine, subconscious, conscious, romance, intuition, psyche, climax, pride, vigor, um, affection, recognition, invitation, sensuality. Um, and then, you know, it's like, it, it's the yin and the yang. So, it, and I think people get confused too. Sometimes they're like, I don't know if this is my twin flame because we're not exactly alike. Or we don't have like, you know, people think of twin, right? You don't have to look like them. You don't have to be anything like them. But a lot of times you will find weird similarities among you. Like at your core, at your base, it's like you both kind of strive for the same thing. Or you both feel the same way about stuff. You both look at the world through a lens that's kind of like, like you can, you can see through their eyes at least, you know. Like you don't, you, they're basically like if they say something, do something, whatever. M majority of what comes out of them or do they do or whatever besides maybe like may trigger your jealousy because they are desired to trigger you okay that, and that's another aspect but for the most part you will have a, a, a resonance between you but when you are in your run your connect correct energy in there and theirs feminine and masculine it's like a fucking dance and, and you will not be able to deny the the magnet that that gets like <laughs> When you both get into alignment with the right energy, when you're not in your heads, when you're not freaking out, when you're not overthinking, when you're not mad, when you're not sad, when you're not scared, when you're not... All of those things, which does take some time um, sometimes to get there, and it takes working on the subconscious, the beliefs that you hold onto your intuition and, you know, allowing yourself to be soft and sensual, allowing yourself to um, open up and receive the masculine and then the masculine needs to be in his masculine power he needs to be able to show up and, and feel confident and um but not with an ego drive you know like basically it, it's a balancing act but you will know on on a level that's probably just i don't even know exactly how to how to word it but it, it's it's you'll know when you when you when you hit the button you'll know um, because it just like, it just does, it just hits, it's like, oop, I hit the right spot, um, and it, I think it can shift over time, or you could be, you know, with, within it for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years, I think it will change too, as you, as you evolve, and as you grow, you know, like, you might find that, like, um, each time you come back together, you're able to, like, overcome a little bit more, or spend a little bit more, um, time within each other's energy because again you do trigger each other so if, like you you know say they call you up you go spend time with them and then they they disappear they ghost or whatever it's likely that something got triggered within them that freaks them the fuck out or there's something that there's not been cleared yet there's some kind of contract or some you know thing that they have to like take care of or something that you need to take care of um you know, and, and I don't say that to give people excuses to go act like assholes and be like, blah, blah, blah. But there is a lot of triggers that they will, like, if, if you have jealousy, you could bet your ass they have jealousy. But don't engage in it. Don't keep triggering them because that's going to keep you in separation. Somebody needs to become the one that matures. Somebody needs to be the one that's like, all right, like, if I want to fucking have a legacy here, if I want to have this, like, next level awakened, ascended a version of us... You know, these are these are wise, you know, healed, whole, divine beings. They ain't fucking tit for tatting. They're not like I'm gonna see you like you make you mad. They're not doing shit like that. They're con they're filling them de their cells up with light. They're filling themselves up with knowledge and wisdom. They're healing. They're they're applying energy to things. They're they're putting something into the world that matters, and they're changing the things that are not of an alignment. So, 
if you find yourself getting sucked into stuff that you know is not good, or, you know, they've done something, said something, or you're fucking focused on their comic, and the comic's doing this, and the comic's doing that, and blah, 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 blah. the more you look at that, the more you focus on that, the more that you give energy to that, the more you're going to see that because you're the fucking creator of your reality, and they are connected to you, and when the two of you focus on a reality together, you amplify and magnify that reality even more and more and more. If the two of you could come together and put those, those, that, that ability, that power, that yin-yang magnetic thing that runs this entire universe into the flow in alignment and like cooperation, the forces of the universe to align with that energy, you would have the luck of the draw. You would be able to manifest amazing changes and good things, that fulfillment, that love that affection that contentment that bliss that stuff that makes you feel so good that's like you don't care about where you've been what happened when or wherever it's like it's beneath you it's the over and done it's it's whatever it's yesterday isn't today let's just be in the moment and enjoy you know and forgive and, and keep moving so that you can have the abundance of good times the fulfillment of joy and you can embrace the tears of sorrow and you can have those moments because we are still in a dualistic reality but when you you know don't look at things so like black and white or you don't get so consumed within or sucked down into something or a victim of or conditioned to believe or you know i'm sure bad it's sad you're your own worst enemy Okay, and whatever you are doing to yourself or thinking to yourself or telling people, you know, they hear you telepathically and there's that electrical pulse between the high priestess and the high priest. You need to vibe at that highest quotient of light and balance your energies so that those waterfalls of emotions can cleanse and shift your situations to clear those karmic contracts. And yeah, be logical when you think about the con comic contracts. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm glad that they have that comic over there to deal with their bullshit. So I don't have to be the one dealing with their bullshit when they're acting that way or doing that thing. Let them clear that shit up. And when they're ready to unite and bring in infinite love, unified duality, no more up and down, back and forth, d bullshit, douchebag type of crappy craps. That's when I want my twin soul to show up. To bring me that joy, that, that sound healing. So it is our mission to heal ourselves and others. And a lot of us do have, you know, lives that we've lived. We've been here before. Some of us were here in Atlantis. And some of us were here in other star systems and other places. Um, but you want to utilize your light and raise the vibe. That's the main goal here. And in order to do that... You've got to become that master teacher. You need to assist and teach, align with your full mission as the master teacher. So as you master the self-healing, as you master yourself, you will be able to then turn around and help other people. They're like, yep. So um, release the emotions connected to lower vibration. You are fully supported and loved. Release through feeling. Wash these away. When you get into the shower, imagine the water's washing it all away. Use salt within there. Take a bath. Um, go out to the water like if you have ocean or a pond or some sort of element of water near you the water is the best to cleanse the emotions the fire is the best to quick quick transformation and transmutation of things that need to go um, do the meditations do the connecting i'm going to be doing some um things that i was going to be doing for myself anyways in connection to this stuff like like my shamanic work that i do but then i realized like i'm like i don't think a lot of people know the basics of this or they they probably haven't done this or they they may just not know where to begin and i know a lot of people get like that and then they just don't do anything because they just don't know how or they they just like kind of lost or at a loss so i was going to like um use out there get the fire pit right there um and then like the room downstairs and stuff like that so as i do it for myself i'm going to share it with others it's going to be on the divine essentials channel Basically, I'm going to call it Shaman S101 and just give you the, the very foundation of, of doing a shamanic journey and how to connect with the different things for yourself and what you should be doing on your path individually so that you can allow that light to bring strength, confidence, abundance, and wisdom. And they say, allow yourself to receive, okay? Um, 
And when you allow yourself to receive, you're going to break free. You're going to tame your wild, you know, self. But you're going to allow your desires to be unbridled. You might have sexual energy that motivates you. Um, and strong emotions. Again, I feel like there's very strong emotions that are hidden. Again, they're like, I want to tell you everything I'm feeling, but I'm, I haven't been able to. So <clears throat> it's a mystery. It's hidden. It's unknown. But you probably know it on some level because it's the same thing that you feel. So you're inexperienced. You're still children in con in the connection on that level you know it's like you just have to you have to figure it out you know have those new beginnings be a little spontaneous a little carefree you know <clears throat> be tender with each other and and you know reconcile be bring warmth harmony beauty love contentment um a gift creative like get creative in how you do this stuff but this man would be your divine masculine and at some point the partnership will go into a union the next level um, some sort of promise for some of you it will be a marriage or um, a promise ring or whatever it is but this magnetic thing this longing and desire this gravity that you have this attraction and this yearning and this energy it doesn't go away and it's not going to go away and they can you know they can try to shut it off they can try to turn it down they can try to distract themselves with other people or other things or alcohol or you know whatever it's not going to matter because it's, they're, you know, especially if they wake up. Because once you wake up, you don't go back to sleep, right? You just continue to be present for that metamorphosis. You continue to open. You embrace that change. And there's an evolution of your soul where you reinvent yourself and your alignment comes. You fall in love. You become inspired in the miracles fall into your life. And peace washes over you. And there's those dolphins confirming to bring the harmony, the helpful, effective communication. So playing and humor and having fun and collaborating with each other, having fun, enjoying, you know, do it in a way that you guys can be, you know, confident or comfortable communicating to each other. I feel like um, people put too much pressure on themselves and that's why a lot of people shut down. They're like, I, I wanna tell you, I've tried, but I can't do it. It's because Everybody makes everything so serious or everybody gets all like worked up or they think that like they, they're just stupid. I don't know what I'm doing and blah, 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 blah. they don't want to be judged. But if you show up for somebody in that that joyful energy and your supportive friend, you know, and your faithful companion, loyal and devoted to them, like the empress, you know, you have that magnetism, that pleasurable beauty, that charm, that grace, like the nurturing, mothering energy that they need to be able to give that part of themselves to speak and once that happens between the two of you or once one of you opens that doorway or shows the other how to be available for that the other one will be able to follow suit you know and it will probably get easier over time but you basically you get curious adaptable creative and resourceful and clever on how you're going to do that but the two of you have this belonging to each other you have these roots together which go back many 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 places um you keep healthy boundaries but you have something within you that is a safety a comfort this is your roots this is like you're always coming home to each other so know where you're going know that you're going home know that you're migrating and you're on a quest but it's a cyclical like like just be faithful to the fact that like yeah we're on a mission we're on a thing we know what we're doing in some way you know we may not know exactly what we're doing how we're doing it and where we're going to be at the end of it and all of that exact days and all but we will be successful we will come out on top we're going to dominate but because we have that persisting will to win um and then there's you the woman and the uh well i'm assuming some of you are the masculine some of you are the feminine um whichever one you are doesn't matter uh, take it as it, you know, is for you to make sense, but we have the feminine, the man, and the lady, okay, coming out on top. These are the things that you came here to do as divine feminine, or that empress energy. And it's like, I feel like we would be the ultimate power couple. You know, when you take that committed thing to each other on that higher level, and you cleanse out that shit that's within the emotions, and you say yes to mastering yourselves and each other and raising your vibrations, overcoming the shit that's been playing out for eons, and bringing that joy, that high vibrational frequency into your life, you will be a power couple in a way that, like, is beyond the power couple thing that people think of now. Um because you're unifying that shit, you're clearing out that karma, and you're doing the work that is like literally a divine mission and purpose for sacred divine.
transformation. Um, let's see. So I feel like somebody may want to take a leap of faith. These are cards that I shuffled earlier because this is a big deck. <clears throat> Where is the other part of it? I forget where I put the other part of it. Oh, here. So I shuffled earlier and I these are the ones that came out. Um, I've also been playing with these two. So we got Father Sky, Trust in the Unknown. You know, like I said, we won't know all the little things at all the at the exact moments. But if, and I keep seeing ones and sevens today, like nonstop. Um, you know, we may not know exactly when or what day or what what time everything's gonna play out, but the synchronicity will bring you balance and certainty along the way for five and two with Sam. Um so that you can know when to take that leap of faith. That you can know where you're going in some ways. Not all the ways and not all the times and not all the things are meant to be known. <clears throat> so that, you know, like like you can dream it into being too. Because that's part of this thing. So you're going to learn. You're going to go through your lessons. You're going to grow. You're going to trust. You're going to awaken. And then you're going to, like, heal and recuperate from where you've been and who you've been and all of that. And get creative to dream into being a new existence, a new reality that is balanced. So that you can have certainty and, and trust in the unknown. But knowing that the unknown or the, knowing that at the end of it all, it's like, it's divine. It's beautiful. It's not going to be a bad thing. It's not going to be a scary thing. It's just going to keep getting better and better and better because you're going towards... Um, success and happiness. But times there will be times for you to take time to reflect and move beyond ancestral patterns. So literally, like, we can have that sun, that masculine energy. We have to reflect occasionally. We have to trust what we don't know at moments. Um, get out of the ancestral crap that we've come into in this incarnation here specifically. Just coming here and having parents and a bloodline and all of that. Um, it does impact us. It's going to impact the way that we have partnerships. But if you have unconditional love, you can rejuvenate anything. You can heal anything. And the spiritual progress and the success and hope will bring you further along on your journey each day. You also have that illumination, that chemistry, that inner fire, soul spark. And someone very exceptional, magical, and attraction. Okay, so this is like what you guys are to each other. Um, I feel like, I, I feel like, again, both parties look at the other, um, almost, almost too much in this way of like, oh my God, they're so amazing, which I get, but realize if you're, if you feel that way about them and you're twin flames, this, they're, they're you being reflected back to you. You're just as amazing as the amazing amount of them that you see within you. Okay. One, two, two, one, blah, blah, blah. it's going to be one, one, one in a minute. And I've been affirming our union into existence. So, you know, keep affirming the positivity. Know that things are going to be taking that leap of faith towards where you're supposed to go. And if they've been in, you know, heaviness or you've been in heaviness, the codependencies, the addictions, um, emotional baggages, unhappily married with people and situations or cell 10733 on the clock. Um, it's time to release that shit. It's time to let that stuff go. And there's a little ladybug. Like, yeah, man, it's a good omen. It's a good sign or omen to get rid of the baggage and the burdens. If you're feeling cursed or feeling guilty, you're feeling shame and regret, you don't need to. You, it's unwanted. It's unpleasant. If it's been repetitive, it's going to feel good when that shit's over and done with and cleaned up. And it's probably an unavoidable cleanup, okay, uh, for these things. Like So, and this could be, again, codependency, just a behavior within yourself. You may not be exhibiting it in, like, the most toxic or horrible ways, or it may not be um, with each other even. It could be that they're in a karmic situation. You're in a karmic situation. Wherever it is manifesting within things. Just become aware of it. And and clear it. And then writing communication. Number 277. Um, I feel like there will be communication when you start to clear these things out. When you trust your gnosis. When you're confident within the guidance that you receive from above, when you receive from within, when you believe in your power and you have that resilient stamina to know, like, I can do this and, like, I'm grounded, I'm dependable, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to build, I'm ready to be practical and grounded, but I'm also passionate about this and um, creative, you know, and I'm sexy and larger than life and I'm inspired to express my emotions and to feel my emotions and to have these emotions wash over me and wash over you and you know flow with each other spark with each other stabilize each other 
Um, and then <laughs> new beginnings, desire, sex, procreation, fertility, a sudden increase, multiply. So some of you may have a sudden increase within the sexual energy, the sexual desires. I feel like this may be also a cyclical thing. It could even be like a monthly thing depending on your cycles and um, stuff like that. I did notice it, it, for a long, the longest time, it was like every time that um, I would hear from that particular person, it would be like the day that I get my period. Like, it was so weird. It, like, to the point where it was like, why? How is this happening? Like, how? What? Do you have like a radar? Like, what are you doing? Um, it was, it, it kind of freaked me out for a while because I'm like, how is this happening? Like, it, every single time. Um, and then I did a, a past life. Well, I didn't even do a past life. I did a meditation recently. And it was just like a, you know, wasn't really like a guided specific any type of intention meditation. I just, you know, you just lay there with your openness to whatever comes up. And what came up was past life. And we were shapeshifters. We were, um, we were like uh, half, half wolf, half, half people. And I feel like that, that instinct or that primal type of, like, she's an eight, you know, it like comes through there. It, it makes sense to me on that. Look at White Wolf, confidence, guidance, trust your nurses, freedom, stamina. I believe in my power and I believe that's what it is. Motherfucker knows when I'm in heat. <laughs> and he wants to multiply um, <clears throat> because that's just basic instincts that come through on that ancestral line. Maybe we don't know it in our, in our like, logical, creative, like, w you know, whatever. Maybe it's not, like, the most accepted, wide, like, thing out there. But in my world, it makes a hell of a lot more sense than a lot of the shit that I have heard. So, mystery, secrets, the unknown, philosophy, intellect, knowledge, education, you know, um, it, it comes from within ourselves. We have to start allowing ourselves to open up to the, these bigger things because... The school systems and the way that we have been taught up until now was literally set up in a way to create people who would just be compliant with going to work for the rest of their life. It had nothing to do with educating you or expanding your mind or getting you to think for yourself because thinkers cause problems. They want conformists. They want people who are going to come in and perform. So trust your instincts, you know, get beyond that, that ancestral line harm it away, retreat, recharge, reflect on things so that you can have that success, happiness, um, <clears throat> and then make plans and focus on those plans and make those plans come into fruition within things so that that unconditional love can be renewed and that hope can rise and that balance and that trust and that growth can be dreamed into reality. Um, <clears throat> so then we had balanced, centered, meditate awareness just right equality well-being feeling complete in an aha moment discovery a revealing realizing enlightenment whoa epiphany so it's like when we go within when we meditate when we get centered and balanced we open our awareness to the things that are out there like whoa wow whoa, ah. we think a little bit beyond the box when we go within ourselves and we take that time to meditate when we see those little patterns within things and we recognize how fucking unique and precise the things are and how exquisite and divine and fragile they are because there's never going to be another you there's never going to be another me there's never going to be another anybody that's here at this time there's never going to be another this moment right now as it's passing by so we need to be more aware of all of that like the intricacies and the um little tiny aspects that flow into the big time the big kinds and again be aware and observant uh, magical powers memories are aligned with that energy of the shape-shifting um that mystical magical remembering and that's like yes that's what it was and maybe that's an, maybe that's shocking to people or people that are like i don't know like maybe that doesn't resonate for them specifically but for me it made sense you know and it put the pieces together so trust yourself you know, trust, trust your unique story, trust your unique pieces to unfold for you and your person. <laughs> Look at this, there's another wolf. Take care of your needs. What do you need to succeed within your situation? Um, trust in the higher forces. Not everything is like, you know, black and white, simple, just as we see it here in this, this, you know, this weird little world that we have so we need to take note of our intuitive messages and balance it with you know our 
like our logical 3D, everything that we can see as it is, but also that intuitive shadow, the unknown, the subconscious, the two worlds merged into one. And then the drums is dream and journey. Literally, like the like we use the drum and then the shamanic journeying to create the trance-like state so that we can traverse through the upper and lower and middle worlds through the different levels of consciousness, through the different energies of things so we can have the aha moments, so we can track things down, we can retrieve the things, the pieces of ourselves that have been lost because we are delicate and we do need to do the things that we need to do in order to recuperate and find ourselves. But we also can use that time within that place between those realms and within that energy that's expansive and infinite to dream into being a new reality, a new existence for everybody where we can create the world that's not sick and the people who are awake um, and this hunter, this is actually Kernanis, um, in the book that comes with this deck, they said that he's based off of Kernanis. It says, track down your fears and desires. So it's like, figure out what you're afraid of and figure out what you desire and work on it, okay? Um, and let go of the shit that you're afraid of, you know, or burn it out of your life. Like, right now is the perfect time for the releasing of the old and resting, you know, recuperating, getting rid of anything that doesn't serve us. And then, look, she will unleash the wild within. Like, you know, set a fire, do a fire, do a candle. Write things down that you don't want in your life. What's holding you back? What's blocking you? Who's blocking you? Or what perceive or what perception do you have that you're allowing to block you because that's usually what it is it's usually not anybody or anything outside of yourself it's usually you believing something outside of yourself is is responsible for something when really it's 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 all you um we just would you know we like to point fingers and be like oh but we can transform and unveil the gifts that were within us and we can also shape shift into any type of animal um, and in the shamanic tradition, it's like when when we keep seeing like a certain animal or a certain messenger over and over and over, like the wolf. Or for myself lately, I've seen so many deers. I was driving the other night, there was like deer, 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 deer. I was like, holy shit, I'm gonna die because deer's you know pretty big. You don't want to hit one. Uh, there was a deer out here the night that like the first night that I went out there and had crazy weird shit going on, or one of the first nights that I went out there and had crazy stuff. Uh, then one night I was pulling in here, and there was deers all over the place, like coming into this driveway. Um, and that was like in a very like short amount of time. So when that's happening, they're usually trying to deliver their medicine to you. And so you would want to look into that or meditate on it too. But also like you can get a deck that has all the animal meetings in it or just Google what is the message of like the deer? What is a deer? And the deer is actually tied to love and unconditional love. But it's also um, people like myself who've been through trauma, right? Like we have fight, flight or fawn. So, like, the, it's like, we're going to fight, we're going to flight, or we're going to freeze. That's what this does. She freezes. Um, gets scared, gets nervous. It's like, ah, on high alert. But it's also very gentle, very nurturing, very soft. Um, it, it, and they see this as, like, a keeper between the worlds. Like, she's, like, able to walk between the realms. Some of them are here, some of them are over there, and he had a portals. And obviously he... He he's harnessing some of that energy too, uh, but he's he's actually seen as a hunter and the hunted um, within the traditions and things like that. And he was like the first dude on the planet. Um, and then obviously she is probably shape shifting into the wolf. But again, these are all synchronicities, and we get the eagle condor energy there. Unveil your gifts. Tap in. Um, that's going to be part of the shaman thing, too. I'm going to help people to find their place of power, help them to figure out which animals are theirs uh, that work with them every time they go to the lower world, middle world, upper world, all that stuff. How to get there. What to expect there. What are you doing when you do this stuff? Uh, when to do this stuff and um, what to do with all of it. And then I was going to do like little, little guided journeys and things, but... Um, Wait for important information, okay? So it's like, basically, at this time, when you when you open yourself up and you allow yourself to have the embracing of the energy of peace, like, we don't need to fight, okay? Everybody's always like, I'm going to fight, hunt, burn, blah, blah, blah. No, the, the whole thing with this is like the broken arrow. If it was the arrow that's not broken, it's like, yeah, you might want to protect yourself, fight with people. This is like, we need to stop fighting with each other. We need to stop being in competition with each other. We need to stop trying to outdo the other people or trying to, you know, whatever. 
There's no reason for that shit. We gotta shape shift all of that stuff, the ego, and work together here to shed that old bullshit because it's obviously not working out too well, right? Seeing from that higher perspective allows us to know that we can grow through this situation. We can be more wise and more aware and more heart-centered. Love and let yourself be loved. And with the great teacher, it says, learn from the spiritual experience. You know, um, everything that we have around us is, is, is an experience. But you can look at it one way or the other. You can be, you know, sad and down and bad and stuck and bleh. Or you can rise up and harness that mystic power that's within you. Trust the talents that you have within these changing times. And know that you came here at this time for a fucking reason and a purpose. And if you embrace that, you can enjoy the growth and reap the rewards. She's like the Nine of Pentacles, the Empress energy within this deck. Again, we've already seen the Empress. So, you know, instead of being like... Like, I want to fight, or I'm going to kill, or, blah, 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 or looking at it like it's like some dark battle type of thing. Embrace and be devoted and committed to setting their sights higher to enjoy the growth, to reap the rewards, to connect with your emotions, to feel your emotions, to drop the shields, to drop the guards, to l be the peacekeeper, and to let go of that need of being right. Let go of that need to, you know, be the best or to outdo somebody else. Be the medicine mother who honors your inner knowing and be open to the healing information that other people deliver to you or would like to deliver to you. You know, work in collaboration, exchange your energy to create abundance. You know, you can't do it all alone um, and you shouldn't even want to, but you can, you can evolve, you can learn and you can shift to feel loved and comforted on this planet, but you're going to have to shift the perceptions, you know, and help others with those seeds that you plant as, you know, star seeds, twin flames, however you want to perceive it. But we have the keys and the solutions, the intelligence, the genius, the insight, the clarity to break out and liber and have liberty and to um, unlock the helpful information that's going to help us to establish and keep our ambitions and develop that longevity, that maturity, the sexuality and the achievements within a passionate and amazing, exhilarating celebration. We can have that, that hot holiday explosive passion with somebody, but we can't be secretive or hoard away things like you can't give lip service or miscommunicate and expect for people to harmonize and work together. You can't be all secretive and try to keep everything for yourself. You know, like when you have these aha moments, share them with others, teach others, help each other so that we can get the information that's needed and we can dream in collaboration to make a better influence or impact on this energy that's out there. You know, um, like me and you adding our energies together to dream into being a better tomorrow, better ex existence for, you know, the times to come. Being very detailed within it. Like, say I take, a, you know, 50 people on a guided journey, right? Or like, what, however many people, like the, the Archangel Meditation I have on Divine Essentials, there's like quite a few people who have watched that one. Every time somebody watches that, that guided meditation, connecting with Archangel Michael, like that's another energy, that's another frequency, that's another shift within that. So we want to keep doing that. That's the goal. But... Without the thing of like, but my channel is better than your channel. Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. You don't need to be better than anybody. We need to come together with everybody. And, and, and that's one of the major problems that we've had here. Everybody wants to protect themselves. Everybody wants to, you know, be, be better than the next or outdo or outshine or whatever. Yeah, stand your ground, be powerful and protect yourself. But to unlock that magic within us or to really truly like have that amazing powerful like like world shifting world shaking crazy type of energy we would want the entire collective working together in harmony there's people here or those in charge here very small amount of them that have segregated us separated us and get us to go against each other for that exact reason that they don't want us to collaborate they don't want us to be you know working together or or figuring these things out because it's easier to um you know keep the keep the masses under control keep the keep us in this slave system um when we're hating each other or we're in competition with each other or we're focused on our money and our ego and our separation and our who's cool and who's this and who's that and what car did you get and i feel inadequate like stop doing that to each other 
so that we can overcome all of the bullshit so we can see from a new perspective so get rid of the illusions trusting the intuition seeing the fantasies the dreams and all of that as like a possibility because it is a possibility but we've been so separated from each other we don't harmonize with each other we could have already shifted this place like so many times by now if we just all collectively came together so we need to ignite and get things done we need to fuel the flames and spark that process of happening and it's going to be stepping stones the process of arrival so just keep going you know we're going to keep on going step by step this is the way out of here this is a way to where we want to go and this is an agreement and a pact and a contract and a circle that we've all committed to not just to divine feminine divine masculine all of us as a whole as a collective consciousness on the planet at the moment that we happen to be here have decided to do so for a reason it was a promise it's a bond it's an alliance and we've committed to it but we've gotten lost along the way because it happens sometimes we spin that wheel and things get a little woohoo but be optimistic be grateful be tolerant and allow the destiny and the turning points the goodwill and fortunes the luck and the growth to unfold in a better way especially when you're optimistic and grateful for the things around you. That's how we have justice and balance. That's how we'll be coming into that place of accommodating our desires and having the harmony and the balance between the social, um, you know, classes and everybody that's out there. So mastering ourselves and teaching ourselves so we can master and teach others by utilizing that light, balancing those things out. So you can be that power couple with everybody. And they say, I do want you to take care of me the way I know only you would. So again, they do see you as that empress. Like they probably feel that within them or within you that you just naturally have that vibration. They recognize that inside of you, that nurturer, that lover, that divine feminine. Um, and then I can imagine our future husband and wife, mom and dad. So again, it goes along with the emperor and the empress. Some of you are meant to be together and be mom and dad. Some of you are meant to get to come together and give birth to a shift within the collective some of you are meant to give birth to whatever you know it, it doesn't matter everybody is at different points and some of you are older some of you are younger but we need to acknowledge the deep issues we need to acknowledge the wounds from the past we need to do the work on all of this and clear out those karmic contracts so that we can unite with everybody you know and all of us need to work on ourselves and take better care of ourselves our energies our auras um you've inspired my healing of so many blocks and wounds so you've already been inspiring each other you've already been helping each other like like i've said it before i wouldn't even be doing this work at all at all like if if it wasn't for this person okay like it, 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 it it's so intricate and crazy and weird it's like when i sit back and i think about stuff I'm like holy shit i can't believe like like that led to here and that led to this like things that he don't even know but like seriously like it's all interwoven it's all playing out for a reason so if you find yourself within the synchronicity you find yourself within all of this craziness maybe you feel crazy at times maybe you feel like you don't know or maybe maybe you are on a spiritual journey but um you're on a path of, of remembering your divinity or your light or your you're on a path of releasing a karmic so that you can find your true divine counterpart okay but you would only figure that out through going into the shadow and recognizing that like if you're in a bad relationship or in a bad thing that keeps playing out over and over and over and over and over um and there's never any progress forward or the person's never becoming like healthier the, you just become more and more you know upset and there's just more and more wounds that are being created as a result of it that's the thing that you would have to go within and acknowledge within yourself okay what about me is enjoying this like where am i addicted to this because people literally become addicted to the toxic they become addicted to the oh something's happening people don't want to sit by themselves especially if they've been through something if you've been through trauma you've been through pain you've been through anything bad it's like people that's why people get codependent or they rush to the next relationship or they're constantly you know consuming or doing or whatever because they don't want to face themselves or they don't want to face the shadow or they're just you know overwhelmed by it you know or they need somebody to help them through it so if that's the case you find somebody to help you through it you make the plan and you focus on it and you get the hell away from the things that are creating those deep wounds so that you can overcome those and become the best version of yourself and shine the light and heal um and expand your mind and see in new ways and then thank you for accepting me as i am so i feel like again that energy of like 
um, like the nurturer, the lover, the mom type of vibes. It's like, I feel like you do have that f very strongly for them and they probably have it for you too. And, and, and that's another thing. Like if it's your true twin flame, they're not going to be like looking at you and thinking like there's something wrong with you or you should change this or you should change that or, or they're, you know, whatever. Like, like you will fulfill them as you are. There's you, people telling you, you need to change maybe possibly like emotionally, uh, there could be growth that needs to be had or um, expanding the mind and seeing in new ways or whatever, natural things like that. But if they're like, you're just ugly and I don't like you, and blah, 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 you're too, 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 like just mean, outright mean or toxic or manipulative or lying to you flat out, just like hurting you over and over and over, if that type of shit's going on, that that would probably be an indicator that that's the toxic thing you need to clear out to make the space for the good things to come in, okay? And then we've lived our lives uh, that we need to heal karma from. So again, you know, they're, they're, like there's many lives, there's many places. It's not just here. But when you do the work, um, it will help, you know. You can do more and inspire yourself to do more too. And sometimes I do think that people come into these connections with people like this as like the trigger to get you to get off your ass and to do something for yourself because so many people especially if they've already been through something they might come out of that and never do anything for themselves again or believe in themselves enough to ever even put the effort in you know it's like i'm much more willing to people please or i'm much more willing to do for you or to run a you know a whole event so that other people can benefit from it rather than just myself but that's because of the things that have been through the stuff that was said to me and the ideas that were fed into my brain the belief systems that make me think oh i'm just no good i'm not worth it but i'm aware of it and i can heal it by being aware of it and realizing like that's not a correct thing and i need to um shift that and take care of my energy my aura clear those karmic contracts if i really want those blocks and those things to go away so it's time I fe speak with my inner child and fill up with love. My childhood wasn't perfect. I need to let it go. Um, so obviously you, your person, I don't think anybody had a perfect childhood. I don't think that exists here at this point because it's like so many generations deep now that it's like somebody somewhere along the way got messed up. So you may have it indirectly or directly or all of above, but there's probably something on some level in some way that you have your history line, you have your genetic line you have your your lived experiences you have your dna you have your past lives there's all these things that impact you cellular energetic quantum levels um like like think of quantum entanglement like that's like a perfect example of like what the twin flames experience it's like oh yeah there's, like you can take one atom and split it in half and the atoms are going to do this but as soon as you split them in half they start doing like like this one's going up infinitely and this one's going down infinitely and that's how they're always going to be now because you cut them in half but if you take this one that's always going up and you take this one that's always going down and you put them worlds apart light years away from each other and then you ding this one this one will be dinged at the same exact moment because they're entangled within each other you know they're 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 interconnected but they're also working like you know they're both like ah! moving in different directions it's it's crazy but um you know it, it, it's there's so many examples of this within the creation there's so many ways that i've seen this like be um you know depicted on stuff that you wouldn't think like like even the way bees are with their um they have an electromagnetic field around them and that helps them to know like where to go to get there to get the uh, pollen they vibrate they're not built to fly not, there's so many things here that are not built to flight. They're not aerodynamic. They should not fly by like what our brains know or would construct as a thing. But it's because of the vibration and the frequencies that they emit that allows them to elevate. That's why we were able to build the fucking pyramids. Because it wasn't like, oh yeah, we get enough rope and uh, 10,000 dudes. It was oh, raising stuff with the frequency. So raise your frequency. Get your energy up. Um, no, like there are emotions that's being hidden inside. I feel like both of the people probably have that as well. But they do wish it was easier to express it. And I feel like the more you learn to raise up and the more you do this work, the easier that's going to get, okay? 
and they're like i need to learn how to let people in so it's like they're aware of it and you're probably aware of it too and it's, and i think this is a condition that's across the planet everybody's been conditioned to be like "Ooh, i don't trust you you're bad and, oh i gotta like be in competition who's got the best ass who's got the best this bip, 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 black and white girl and boy bip, 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 fight all fight it's stupid okay we need oneness we need unity we need to work together um that's that's really not a bad thing to do but i need to rebuild my confidence i've been so stupid so i feel like this is again the results of people who've been hurt people who've been um like in toxic relationships or maybe had parents in their life or dynamics in their life where they saw stuff that was not necessarily the most healthy okay so that's impacted their confidence that's impacted the solar plexus they need to step into that power that confidence so that they can you know feel confident about letting people in because if you don't feel good about yourself you don't feel confident about yourself letting people in expressing feelings is going to be 10 times harder than than it already was and a way to do that is mirror work it's time to look in the mirror and face myself which we did see here with the um you know doing the the reflection mirror guardian take time to reflect you know, you can do a mirror meditation, basically. Um, you can do affirmations. I am beautiful. I am amazing. I am sexy. I am, like, soulful. I am healed. I am awesome. I am wonderful. I am alive. Um, let us see. What is the guardian? Got a black magic woman. Uh, uh, oh, it's on page 111. <laughs> All right. You are a beautiful being who has surmounted so many challenges and expanded in so many ways. Your angels are now guiding you to take inventory of your life, to take the time to note all of your recent experiences, the challenges that you had, the strengths that you've developed, and the lessons that you've learned. Your angels want you to reflect on your strengths, in particular those aspects of yourself that you feel have not been acknowledged by others. Offer yourself approval where it's due, and know that when you give yourself credit, others will be able to as well, okay? If you want somebody to love you and respect you and see you as beautiful and honorable and amazing and to unite with you and find you to be confident and ba -ba -da -boo, all the things, I want you to love me unconditionally, well, you're going to love you unconditionally so they can mirror that back to you, okay? So if you want respect, respect yourself. If you want love, love yourself. If you want health, be healthy for yourself. You know, if you want to raise the vibe, raise your vibe through embracing and embodying the things that you want to see within others being reflected back at you through their actions, their words, their things that they do for themselves too. Okay? So angels accept you just the way you are, even when you are going through a challenging time. They will still hold you in the highest esteem. And the mirror guardian is a female angel looking into the mirror of life. She invites you to witness your spiritual strength and beauty. To see yourself as angels do. And the mirror represents the fact that your core beliefs and ideas are in fact what is reflected back to you by your world. Your life is a big mirror. And how you feel within, in the mirror guardian, helps you to recognize that. And when the card appears, you are being invited to take some time to see where you are right now. Okay? So, look into the mirror. Make some affirmations. You know, check in with yourself. Um, some people do it naked because they can really like truly study their body and what the, one thing I try to get people to do is like what is your favorite p feature on your especially women have a hard time looking at themselves when they're naked in the in the thing right now okay um, whatever whatever the bad things are that you all <laughs> zoom in on don't do that zoom in on your favorite feature Whatever it is. You like your right boob, you like your nipple, you like your butt, whatever. Whatever the thing is that you like the best. It's like, this is my best feature. I love this feature. I'm so grateful for this one that I have. It could be a nose, an earlobe, whatever. But when you look at it and you are happy about it, like, I'm so good. Good thing I got this thing. Because, I, you know, maybe, I didn't, maybe you're not happy about some other things. But, okay, I got this thing. It's amazing. And get into the frequency, the energy of that thing that you love the most about you. And then maintain that energy. That vibration, that like, ah, about that piece of yourself, but try to um, carry it to the other parts of you. So like, say you like your belly or like the way that, you know, your stomach does whatever, but maybe you don't like your thighs because of this or that. Or blah, blah. 
So looking at the belly and accepting that and loving that and oh, I like this and how this curve goes like that. Maintain, maintain, maintain down into the thighs and bring that frequency, that vibration, that acceptance, that love and that, you know, wow, gratitude onto those other parts. It will shift them. You will begin to reflect not instantly like boom, but you will begin to reflect those new beliefs and that new energy, that new acceptance of yourself. Um, and they're saying you are love, lovable and loving. The energy of love is surrounded your whole world at this time. Angels are swirling around you, encouraging you to open your heart and to reveal the blessings that you have to offer. They want you to know that you are a highly loving being who deserves to give and receive love. If you're finding challenging to feel love at this time, it's important for you to give and receive love. And if you are finding, oh, no, but it's important to give yourself credit where it's due. You are also encouraged to welcome support from others. Learn to receive. Don't try to do everything on your own. And if you are working on a relationship or are in a new relationship, this card can usher in energies that allow you to forge a powerful connection with your partner. Love is in the air. Okay? So, you know, be open to receive the love. And allow the love in. And the elder is the ancestor who comes with a message of healing change. He's an embodied soul, yet he has journeys that go beyond the physical. Therefore, he represents a reclamation of power. When he appears, it's an acknowledgement that you have the capacity to move beyond the limitations that have been placed upon you. If you have had expe expectations of success, failure, sadness, or even sickness placed upon you by your family, it's important to know that you are here to create your own story. This card represents personal healing that will bring healing to your family lineage, past, present, and future. Know that you get to decide what you take on. Um, and also know that your ancestors are rooting for you and are sorry for any setbacks that they have created for you. Page 33, transformation. Again, dream into being the reality that you want to be within. Just because this one had this and this one had that and did b -b 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 and pass these things down that weren't good. And b -b 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 keep on focusing on that shit. You're going to have that shit. Create a new story. You will have a new story. There's literally, I have a, I have a book called Change Your Life by writing the new version it's like it is like in depth like 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 it, it like if you were going to write a whole story of your life thing basically you do that but you change the story like oh my grandparents are millionaires but 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 you know start start in the total opposite of what the things are that you feel have been detrimental caused pain caused like things to be difficult you know maybe um depression led to darkness led to sickness led to cancer led to you know people passing that on through this or um you know maybe you, there was pillaging or raping or just destruction and wars and whatever has transpired in your family in your history you know people before you or past lives even rewrite the story do not keep telling that that crappy story or thinking about that crappy story even if you don't tell the story to anybody else just tell yourself a new story in place of the ones that that create the the disharmony and the disease and there are spiritual allies working in your favor and their miracles will unfold much more easily when you move into a state of trust so call back your power and stop allowing external focuses or forces to divert you from the miracles that you deserve hand over all of your concerns and your uh to your spiritual allies and when you do you allow them to send you intuitive guidance and messages that will allow you to correct the situation and to connect come out on top the shaman card also shows that you have shamanic potential to move between the realms and connect with the guides in the extremely personal ways. On the inner planes of all of the shamans in times gone by are helping the human race to understand the complexities of the life and the needs of Mother Earth. Many are working as spiritual guides to light work for the light workers and light warriors. The shaman card brings the energy of your shaman guides to you. Shamans believe that when there was illness or disease, it was because a person's power had been left behind somewhere or a negative pattern was installed into them. In trance, they would travel to the underworld to recall this power and remove the demon. 
in the trance, they would travel to the underworld to recall this power and remove the demon. If this card comes to you, it's because you need to do some release work with lower energies or with your lack of trust in the spiritual energies that are guiding you. Shaman will aid you in your quest, okay? So you got to trust, open up, um, and shape shift, you know, shift the reality. You may have been through challenges and lows, but you are in a safe and transformation or you're in a safe space of transformation. You are moving beyond your past challenges and you are honing your current strengths and there are opportunities for you to discover and rediscover the gifts and talents that you were born with and born to share. All of your past experiences have only helped you see how strong you really are. You are an amazing soul and you can change and transform in ways that people least expect. You have many talents that you will share in your lifetime and you are guided to stay focused on the light knowing that it will guide your for you forward. And when this card comes, there is also an opportunity for you to tap into the power of your spirit animal. Note, if you are seeing a particular animal regularly, it's because its medicine is needed for you. Okay? So, like, I've been seeing the, the deer. I probably need some deer medicine to help. If you've been seeing whatever you've been seeing, call on it to help you. And literally, just call on it, you know? Um, you could, If you have a drum, you could drum. If you don't have a drum, you have a rattle. Uh, Call the spirit, you know, great spirit, creator, you who are known by a thousand names, you who are the unnameable. Please bring the spirit of the hawk. Allow us to raise up to see from a new level of awareness, to rise above the storm, to soar to new heights. And it can be as simple as that. You can light Palo Santo. You can call the directions. Um, I think the four directions prayer is on my website. The contact page that I have. Um, there's one right there for people to, to. It's on the top of it. There's a link for it. It's in the Mooney Key manual as well. Um, and, I, and I say it in the beginning of a lot of the things that I do. All the Mooney Key rites that are posted on Divine Essentials. You can you know, just listen to me and then make it your own. And the she-wolf, you are being rewilded at this time, guided to reconnect to the rebellious hat, the part of you that likes to break the boundaries and go beyond them completely. If you've been holding back on your hopes and dreams, you'd be in encouraged to chase after them now, like the wolf energy within, to help you track down what direction you want to go in. And don't let any traps or hunters get in the way of your freedom and growth. The life you want is here. And that shield maiden is on page 72. All right. So, let's see, uh, when I'm ready to settle down, I'm going to let you know. So, this person, you know, feels like they're probably, um, you know, thinking of you in that way. Like, you know, like, I want to heal my stuff. I want to do the things I need to do. i got to acknowledge this shit and do the work, overcome my difficulties, you know, um, keep healing. I've tried to send you messages, but I always back out last second. So, it's like, they really do probably want to say something to you and they have already tried, but... You know, sometimes people can't do it. Sometimes they just they just don't know how. They're like, I, I want to learn how to be vulnerable and authentic. So it's like they do want to do it. They are probably trying to figure it out because, you know, they probably have figured out by this time that, you know, like they can't they can't deny how they feel, or the magnetism or the energy that they would like, you know, to fulfill or to take it take into their life. But if they're not knowing how to be vulnerable, communicate, share, uh, do all that stuff, it's going to be a little bit difficult at times. So you help them to see healing those deep wounds. They know that they could have a good future with you. Um, they're probably really frustrated with themselves about that, but they do want to be healing all of that, taking better care of that karmic energy for themselves and their, their aura, um, cutting those cords. There is a cord cutting thing on the Divine Social channel as well. It's like one of the first ones that's on like the main page it's a uh, cord cutting with archangel michael he's like i literally want to tell you but i haven't been able to but thank you for accepting me you do inspire me and i'm i'm gonna come to you when i'm ready to i want to be able to like lay beside you watch you sleep i know you're gonna take care of me the way that like only you would but do you think that we could have all the trust and hope needed to make it work so this may be something they worry about because of things that have happened in the past 
They also say you have the most beautiful eyes they've ever seen and that there's no other competition in the book. They're like, there is nobody else. It's like, you're, you're it. You're the most beautiful thing. But I'm hoping that, you know, I, I can overcome whatever things that I have done or whatever things have happened between us. So please forgive all my mistakes because I, I really, I don't think I could handle or be able to come back from, from that loss or that rejection if, if you decide that you will no longer love me or you decide that you can't forgive me or we're not able to make it work because you I've destroyed your trust or, um, you know, whatever, whatever thing it is that might be happening. And they're like, I don't know what I'm running from. You know, I, sometimes I wonder what I'm running from or why, but... Um, I don't even think it's necessarily that they're, they're, re they're even running from anything or, or you or whatever or that they're even running. I think they're just confused and, and consumed within, you know, trying to figure out how to move into this without freaking out or running away because it's an intense situation. It's such an everyday thing. They've never done it before, right? <laughs> it's like, it's not like you've meet, you, every person you meet is shits like this. Um, so they say, I hate this whole situation so much. It drives me insane. Again, they're like, ah, you know, I, I don't want this to be where I am. I want to be able to be comfortable. I want to be able to talk to you. I want to be able to share with you. I want to be able to be enjoying that thing that we have happening. I want to feel your body press against mine again. And my heart is in need of deep love and compassion. So again, I feel like you do offer this to them or you have offered this to them in the past. And that may be another p part of why they're holding back too. They're like, maybe they're afraid to find out that that's, that's been shut off or that they've ruined it because, you know, can, can we have this? Like, did I mess up too much? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Um, and, and again, with that was like some, like they could be resenting you. It's not even that they're resentful of you. But they could be holding on to what they've done or feeling so guilty about what they've done that they cannot see beyond what they're feeling or expecting to feel out of you or expecting to see out of you. Unable to forgive themselves would create somebody being unable to show off you. It, just expecting the worst out of it. And it's like you may not care to the degree that they're they're projecting into you, believing that that's where, you know what I mean? Say they, they, they broke your confidence with them. Um, they broke your trust. And you've already forgiven them and moved away from that. And you're like, it's all right. I love you unconditionally. It's it's whatever. But if they're totally consumed with it, oh my God, I broke their trust. And oh my God, how are they ever going to trust me? It doesn't matter what you're thinking or feeling or doing or being within because they're consumed in the reality where that's a big problem. And if, until they are ready to communicate, be vulnerable and authentic with you um, and take the risk of finding out do you or don't you, you know, feel the way that they're projecting into you, or do you feel like, uh, you know, the way that you, however you feel, whatever it is, they, they're going to have to figure that out, you know. They say, I've looked at your social media, but I don't want you to know. So again, they're not being authentic, they're hiding away, they don't want you to um, be mad at them, but they're afraid to come near you because they, they're not sure if you are mad at them, if you're going to be mad at them. They say, I'm sorry I haven't given you any closure. I'm not ready to let go. So, like, I'm just hiding from you, running from you, because I don't want to let you leave. But I'm afraid that if I come there now, you may not want me either. So I'm, like, you know, hiding over here on the edge, not sure what to do. And I hate that you read my energy, because I can't hide from you. So I'm trying to hide over here on the edge, but you fucking see me. You see right through me. And it freaks me the fuck out, because nobody ever does that. But I will come to get you soon, so be ready. I want to take your clothes off and look into your eyes and make love all night. And I want to kiss you again and hold you in my arms. My passion is growing every moment I'm away. And I find myself fantasizing oh, all the time. One day you'll be mine. Just be patient. And I looked at your pictures and I couldn't resist. Mm -mm. I want to make love to you so I can watch. So I can do some mirror work there. <laughs> you can be like, yeah. <laughs> that might be easy to do the mirror work, you know. Um, you can tell each other what you like. What's your favorite thing? Hold that vibration and roll it over all the other parts. Uh, but again, they are trying to hold back all of this stuff. And I feel like it, it's overwhelming for them because they have a deep desire. They have a deep love. They have a deep passion. They have a deep 
you know, awakening happening and all of that, and you are the only one that they get this way about it. It makes them crazy. It, it, they don't understand it. It's like, what the fuck is this? But they are seeing signs and visions that connect to you. And sometimes they are knowing things and they don't know why. Um, and, and again, if you have gifts, your person's going to have gifts. You know, like if you're very intuitive, you're psychic, or blah, 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 whatever your thing is, your predominant thing, usually they're going to have something pretty similar. Um, you know, and again, you, from the stars, you have those things. They do say, I tried to make you jealous on purpose and I'm sorry I was stupid. So if they did something or have been, you know, exhibiting something that was like, what the fuck? Why would they do that? They, that you might have triggered them and not have known that you triggered them. Like, you could have been, like, you know, just living your life. And they, for some reason, perceived whatever you were doing as, like, a, to poke them, to make them jealous. Because they may just be the jealous type. <laughs> um, and then they may have, like, been like, okay, I'm going to make you jealous back. And you probably didn't fucking even try. And they're realizing that they were stupid for that. Okay? But they they do want to like take things to the next level with you or promise to you that, to like make that up, you know. It's like let's like reconcile reconciliation creatively. Here's a gift. Like I feel like they want to bring you flowers or like a promise ring or or something that will you know cleanse those emotions or bring that that carefree solid you know like that lightness of a child spirit into things to get rid of the guilt and the things that have been painful and hurtful it's so weird because this thing keeps popping up in my head um a lot lately and it's been over a year since since i got it okay um the hawk is back out there too right now so i'm gonna get my thing as you guys can see the hook um hucky hook hey dude no yeah, did you hear i don't know where he is hey So last year, cyclical weird shit show journey thing that we have here, um, I heard from, from the twin person, right? And I don't know why, I don't, I, I really don't know why, like, not, not that I heard from them, but like why, what led to this thing happening, but it did, okay? And, and I knew when I bought it that I wasn't going to like give it to them like then at all and I wasn't even sure if I was ever going to I was just like I just knew that I needed to have it and it connected to them um but look I'm uh, I'm sorry I hold so much in I've always been this way like I, I think a lot of us probably have this thing going on within within ourselves and each other because I definitely have that um I've been broken before and I don't want to do that again, ever again. So it's like we all have this fear of of being, you know, just gutted or being hurt, um, being taken advantage of, you know. And he's like, don't worry about other girls, they aren't you. Um, my childhood wasn't perfect, but I need to let that go. I need to speak to that child and with that love. And, you know, I want to make love to you in front of the thing. Boop, boop, boop. And I, I want to play with myself and, you know, diddle, diddly doo doo. Um, but anyways, for, for some reason, they had told me a thing that happened and it was probably a deep wound that needed to heal for them anyways. Um, but when they told me it was like, when people tell me shit that's like not good and it's hurtful, it's like, oh my God, you know, like it's sad. It, it makes me sad. I know I, I other people have that, but like lately mine's been intensifying and when I heard things from them specifically about shit that, like, happened that was really, like, like sad or um, not easy, you know? Like, oh, my God, that's, like, a traumatic experience. Like, not fun, okay? So it's, like, when a people, when it happens to somebody that I care about, I feel it very deeply. With him, though, it was, like, uneven, weirder. Like, like the whole next day was, like, Bleh. I didn't know how to react. I didn't know how to fucking speak i could never find the words in the moment and then i feel weird saying something afterwards but then i should I'm like i mean i should i'm just like ah. it's like it, it's just you know trying to teach ourselves how to be in behaviors and experiences and you know reactions that nobody ever sh showed us how to have or how to be or how to do or what what's the right thing 
And for the most part, when we do have these reactions, we do do these things with each other, we, you know, say the things that are difficult to say, or we, you know, suck it up and just get that shit out of us and into the ear of the beholder or whatever. It's, it's very rare that, like, anybody's ever like, nah! you know, like, you don't mess it up. It's not a horrible, toxic thing that you usually do. But for some reason, we always still, like, act like, this could go the horriblest, baddest thing ever I've done. It's like we get so fucking overwhelmed and scared um, to just be, you know. And I think that's probably indicated, too, within those of us who maybe had toxic upbringing or toxic parents who would make us, like, feel badly about the things that we said or when we were vulnerable, when we cried, we were told not to cry, when we were upset about something. I was like, what the fucking, what the hell's wrong with you? You fucking idiot. You know, never, never um, just been at, like, you have an actual opinion or like just given an acceptance or that like being heard moment of like i'm sorry that you feel this way you know like just just accepting it and allowing it and allowing you to process it and feel it and heal it and, and do whatever you need to do to get through it and and regulate <laughs> your emotions but if you were never allowed to experience them or you were like secluded away to experience them at all you know it causes some issues so I feel like that that's where a lot of us probably can, you know, have these things coming up from within us, like these deep wounds that we need to heal and then getting the confidence to do that healing and talk, you know, cutting that toxic shit out so that we can feel good about ourselves, accepting ourselves uh, and not doing shitty fucking karmic petty things like this. Because I know like there are girls or, you know, divine feminine will do this to divine masculine, divine masculine does it back. There will be times where there's the tit for tat bullshit. I remember the tit for tat cycle. It was not a fun time. Um, cause it's like, well, they do something, you do something, they do something, you do something. Ding, 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 poke, 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 poke. Ouch. What the fuck? Like, it's stupid. Don't keep fucking poking each other. They will have infinite pokes. And you could have infinite pokes. If somebody needs to fucking step the fuck up and stop poking. Because it's not a fun time. It's not a good look. You guys are delicate, gentle, soft, you know? Learn the wisdom of this and be supportive to each other. Be faithful to each other. Love each other. This is the key to unlock the love of this lovely lady and to collaborate with each other to make your fucking wishes come true and get that boom, woo, 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 woo. Yeah. Let's turn on that mirror. Um, but anyways, for some fucking reason, I came home one night after I heard some stuff about things that, you know, had happened. Um, you know, and like... And again, it's not even connected to that. It's just like, that's what happened. Okay, I came home that night. I was upset, emotional. Um, not because of them, for them, you know. And then, for some reason, I saw this thing. And I was like, I have to buy it. Now, I know, like, it's not a thing that I got for them to, like, to, like, use in the traditional way of what they come as to be used for. But I, like, I felt like what was said within it, like, spoke to me. It made me cry. So I basically got it because of the thing that said it in, okay? So that it's like, uh, forgiveness, right? Um, and again, it was like a fucking ad on a YouTube thing. It was like the 30 second ads. It was like, oh, forgiveness. And like, they were reading this thing and it's, it's a fucking thing. And I fucking, I've never, I'm not a calm, I'm not an impulse buyer like that. Like, I don't, I don't do that. I hit skip ad all the time, man. For some reason I couldn't. And I was like, I have to buy this. <laughs> and I bought it. It is sitting here all this time because, again, I can't, can't ever just be, like, here, vulnerable. But I also don't want them to feel, like, um, anything about it. You know what I mean? Like, it, I don't know. It's hard to express. It's like there's something about it. it I, and I feel like it may have had to have been um, saved or something until the right moment for them to know, like, hey, like, like there is forgiveness because the forgiveness is there, you know maybe maybe that's why it's been saved for all that time because you know it wasn't the right time for that offering <laughs> they're like offerings but it says um if i have harmed anyone in any way either knowingly or unknowingly through my own confusions i ask their forgiveness and if anyone has harmed me in any way either knowingly or unknowingly through their own confusions i forgive them and if there is a situation I am not yet ready to forgive, I forgive myself for that. And for all the ways that I harm myself, negate, doubt, belittle myself, judge, or be unkind to myself through my own confusions, I forgive myself. And it says it on, on this too. 
but I figured it would be like one like you know like a, like imagine it be like you hang it from your 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 rearview mirror or whatever you put it somewhere it's this pretty little box, but it's this thing that was the important part for me. It's not like oh you have to wear this or you have to use this or even let anybody ever fucking see it. Lock it away, hide it in your butt. You know I don't care. Um, but I've uh, held on to that for all this time. Um, but I I felt like that message is, you know, what's needed from people on both sides of these things. We can't constantly hold on to that stuff. Because if we do, we're never going to get anywhere, you know? We're going to stay broken. We have to forgive ourselves and others, and we have to forgive ourselves even when we're not ready to forgive the others yet. But you will get there. And the more that you forgive yourself, the easier it becomes to forgive the others, and so on and so forth. And I really like the box. I didn't know that this was the box that it was going to come with. I'm a box freak. I'm like, oh my god, this is an amazing box. I just thought it was so cool. Because in, in the thing, I, I I remember seeing that, but I didn't see, like, the whole, the wholeness of this. I saw the ring and that, and I, oh. But, yeah. It's been sitting here all this time. <laughs> oh, forgive you. And you can forgive you. <laughs> and forgive me. And forgive everybody. Maybe, I don't know. But, yeah. We have gotten through. We're starting to see things more clearly now. And we got to speak that inner child um you know fill ourselves up with love and do what we need to do to feel more confident about doing this shit you know like hey yeah we all have these wounds we all have this stuff to forgive we all have stuff to accept we all have shit that hurts and it makes us feel awkward karmic contracts that we gotta clear we want to talk to each other we want to tell each other all this shit but it's hard because it hasn't always been a safe easy conducive world to do that but inspiring each other and I do believe that you can have that trust and hope that's needed to make it work when you you know like tie in the forgiveness and the hope and the trust and all of that with the love and the compassion um and that inspiration to do better and raising that perspective up to the new heights um and no more running away you know like no more running away no more no more expecting what's already happened it's like don't worry about other girls they aren't you so exactly like if you've been broken before my other girls don't worry about it because they ain't me <laughs> you know you gotta you guys have to you know think utilize those types of um concepts of looking at it you know instead of i wish it was easier to express my feelings be like it is easier to express my feelings because it's you rather than I can't because it's you, you know, try to shift the way you look at it, the way you speak about it, the things that you are equating to it, because it's going, I think a lot of times we create more problems for ourselves just based off of who it is in our mind. Like, oh my God, it's Nam. Like, ah. The journey, as a suggestion, make an offering to whatever nurtures your soul. If you're nurtured by a particular place in nature, for example, you might consider leaving some fruit at the base of a tree for the animal's in that area to give thanks for the beauty that is there. Uh, the universe is grateful for you. You are a gift to the world. Feel gratitude for everything in your life, even the things that you don't that don't seem perfect. Appreciation for everything flows through you in great bounty. Cherish the preciousness of life, and everyone and everything around you, and thus you will be cherished. Your native spirit wants you to know every native culture throughout history has made offerings, often on a daily basis. Offerings were made to the sun, to the earth, to the plants, to the animals, and to everything in creation. The offerings varied, culture to culture. They were always made with a feeling of extreme appreciation for the bounty of life. Ex uh, gratitude was the secret to a joy-filled life. True thankfulness can work like modern-day alchemy in your life, yielding happiness and peace beyond imagination. And it's simple. Find what's good and wonderful in every moment. No matter what's happening around you, there's always something to be grateful for. Whatever you appreciate in life will grow. So discover what you are thankful for. Even the people and situations you found challenging. And the watch the miracles unfold. And I, I do say that a lot. You know, like that's the secret sauce people forget about. Is, is the gratitude. So I can add gratitude in there and your whole life will change. Things will manifest, amplify. Like, whoa! You know? Craziness. Awesome sauce. I'm amazing i can't believe how quickly i've manifested all this amazing shit 
Woohoo! But yeah, I'm gonna go now. Have a good day. Namaste.